What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to limit the number of new windows you create for your app with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, I want to look at creating new windows and limiting the number of windows you create. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee, it's just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, I've talked about creating new windows with Kinter before. We've done several videos on this. We've done this many times. And it's super easy, but I've been getting a lot of questions recently from several different people. How do we limit the number of windows? So you can see every time I click this button, a new window pops up. And we could just keep doing that. That's not really what you want to do. What you probably want to do is something like this where we click once, we maybe we want two to appear, we click it twice, we click it a third time, uh oh, we get a message, you've already got a windows open and then it won't work again. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So let's head back over to our code, I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kinter videos in this series, almost 200 videos by now, so check that out if you haven't already. So, okay, we've got our basic Kinter starter code, I'm gonna call this windows.py. So let's start out by creating a button and I'm going to call this my button. And this is going to be a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say open window, something like that. And let's give this a command of let's say open. So now let's go my underscore button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 50 and a pad X of 50 just to push the button down a little bit. So this will give us a button right in the middle of the screen. Our screen's going to be 300 by 200, just a little box no big deal. So now we can create this open function that we just named right here. So let's come over here and let's define open. And we want to create a new top level window. So I'm going to call this window top, this is going to be a top level widget. So we do it just like that, we can go, well, let's just sort of kind of copy all of this stuff. And we can paste this in. But instead of root, this is going to be top. Same thing here, top, same thing here, top, there we go. And instead of this saying learn to code, let's just say new window up in the title bar. Okay, so inside of here, maybe we want to create some text. So I'm going to call this my label. And this is going to be a label, we want to put it in top, we want the text to say new window. <laughs> and let's give this a font of Helvetica. And let's say 24 just to make it bigger. And let's pack this guy to the screen, my label.pack. And again, I'm gonna give this a pad Y of 50 and a pad X also of 50 just to push it down the screen a little bit. So, okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it windows.py and see if that all worked. So I'm in my C slash GUI directory and we could call Python windows.py. And when we do, we get this thing. Okay, that looks pretty good. We click this. Boom, a new window pops up, we click it again, another window pops up. Every time we click this thing, a new window pops up. So that might be fine, that might be what you want. But what if you only want one window to pop up? Or what if we want only two windows to pop up? Any number of windows, how could we do that? Well, very simple, and this is not really a Kinter thing, this is really just kind of a Python thing. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna create a counter. So I'm gonna call this global, and let's call this count, or counter. And then we want to set our counter equal to something to start out with. I'm just going to set it equal to one. It doesn't really matter what you set it to, but we're going to start at the beginning. So I'm going to start it at one. You could start it at zero if you want, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Now inside of here, I'm also going to create a global count or counter variable. And the reason why I'm calling this global is because the scope of our program, you know, things inside of a function will only last in that function. If we want it to appear or be accessible outside of the function, we need to make it global. So every time we run this function, we're going to then increment this counter So down here, I'm going to go counter plus equals one. So now every time this gets called, it's going to increment it by one. So the first time it runs, our counter is going to be one, then it'll increment it by one, it'll become two. If we do it again, it'll be three, four, five, every time we hit that button, that counter is going to increase. Well, that's fine. Now we need to do something based on what the counter is. So we're going to use a little logic. So let's uh, create counter logic. So let's go if counter is less than two, right, then we want to open up a new window. 
and increment our counter. So I'll tab all of this in here, right? So the first time it runs, it's gonna be one. One is less than two. So it will open a window. Then it will add one to the counter. The counter will now become two. If we click that button again, counter will not be less than two, so nothing will happen. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. And this should just allow us to open just one window. So if we click this, boom, sure enough, there's one window. If we click it again, nothing's happening. I can keep clicking it all day long. It won't open up another window. So that's cool. That works. That's really all you have to do. So we can play around with this if we want. If we can, we could, let's say, come back up to the very top. Let's create a message box, a little thing that pops up and says, hey, you can't open any more windows or something like that. So we have to import that. We've done this many times. So let's go from T Kinter. We want to import message box. And then down here, let's create an else statement. So let's go else. And then we could just create a message box. And let's go, let's do a show info message box, or you can use one of any of the other message boxes. I've got a lot of videos on message boxes. Check the playlist if you want to learn more about those. So let's just say the title of this will be error and the little message will say, uh, hey, you've already opened a new window. Something like that. So, okay, let's save this, run this guy one more time, see if that worked. So we open a window, boom, the new one pops up. We click it again, uh-oh, error message pops up. Hey, you've already opened a new window. We can close it, hit it again. Hey, it keeps going. Every time, you can kind of hear it, maybe through my speaker, a little chimes a little bit when it opens. And that's all there is to it. Now, I've done just one window here. You could do as many or as few as you want. So if we come back here, and if we change the counter to four, Right, this will allow us to open what three new windows because then it'll get to four. Four is not less than four, and we'll start to get this error message again. So let's save this and run it, see if that worked. So oh, we can do it once, we can do it twice, we can do it three times. After that, boom, we start to get this error message. All right, piece of cake. So, pretty easy concept, very short video today. But I'm not kidding, at least three or four people have asked me about this in the last couple of weeks for some reason. So I thought I'd do a quick video about it. Very easy, just create a little counter. There's probably a hundred ways you could do this, but just thinking about it, hey, we could just make a counter and that seems simple to me and uh, seems to do the job and seems to take care of things. So that's what we do. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. You pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.